Hey, what's up, everybody? Listen, if you have not heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Number one, it's free. Yeah, I got your attention now, right? Number two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Number three, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Number four, you can make money from your podcast. That's right. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum viewership. Number five, it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So right now, Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. What's up, everybody? My name is Cliff and you are listening to the What Now Podcast. That's right. The What Now Podcast, where we, through conversation, discuss ways that we can effectively address life's most difficult moments. So sit back, relax, and enjoy tonight's episode. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Transformation Radio 2.0. That's right, Transformation Radio 2.0. As a matter of fact, this is our second episode of Transform- Transformation Radio 2.0. I want to thank you for joining us on tonight. I try to say this as much as I can, but I really hope that it gets across the sincerity of it. I appreciate each and every one of you that listens to us live, whether it's Transformation Radio, Transformation Radio 2.0, or Transformation Radio, which airs the fourth Friday of every month right here, 9 p.m., on the Off the Chain Network. Listen, I want to send a shout out to Miss Yvonne Mason. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity, providing the platform. Guys, if you don't know her, make sure you check her out on her social media platform, uh, as well as check out the other shows on this very network, okay? Listen, Transformation Radio is a place where we provide a safe space for the uncomfortable and unpopular conversations that are connected to your transformation or to your purpose, all right? My name is Clifton Pettyjohn. I'm a purpose strategist, author, transformation coach, spiritual leader, and I provide tools and strategies to transition you from living a life of merely existing to living a life full of purpose. Did you hear me? I want to say to you tonight, it is possible to live a life that is full of purpose. Why? I can't say it enough. Those who listen to me all the time, you may be sick of hearing me saying it, but you have purpose inside of you. Yes, you do. If we can dig past all of the hurt, all the pain, all the rejection, all the thoughts that are connected to your low self-esteem, all the thoughts that are connected to the identity that you have adopted or adapted, uh, or you, you have adopted because you have adapted to your environment, if we can dig past all of that, you will begin to see that there is purpose in your life. As a matter of fact, the pain, the hurts, the fears, the anger, the rejection, all of that is connected to your purpose. Does it feel good? Does it look good? But guess what? It works for your good, and it establishes you to be who you were called and created to be. Understand, that was purpose connected to your creation. I don't care what you're going through, what it looks like, what it seems like. There was purpose connected to your creation, and that purpose needs to be fulfilled, all right? The world is waiting for you to stand up and fulfill that purpose that is inside of you. Tonight's intro song, excuse me, tonight's intro song deals a lot with purpose. Uh, It was by Eminem called Lose Yourself. If I have any 8 Mile fans on here, I might not have many. Hopefully I do. But if you haven't checked out the movie, I encourage you to check out that movie. I encourage you to check out that movie. And I want you to do it from a non-judgmental standpoint because it talks about his personal life, his personal journey, and the transformations 
and not just the transformation he went through, but the transitions connected to that trans- transformation that he went through. Here's a guy that we look at Eminem, and he's, you know, one of the greatest rappers of all times. You know, he is. He's actually one of the greatest rappers of all times. However, in the movie, it shows that he had ample opportunities to display his gift, his talent, his ability, and he would freeze up. So I want to encourage those of you that are out there that still have those moments of freezing up. You still have those moments. Don't quit, even after you freeze up. There was time he froze up in front of a whole lot of people. He always faced the embarrassment in front of a lot of people. Now, talking to some of you out there, you might feel like that with your personal life. You may feel like you always are the one that faces embarrassment in front of everybody. That's okay. Understand that is okay. All that is being established in, established inside of you is a track record, and a, a, you you become a point of reference for others because if they see you always freezing up or tensing up or what you've identified as failing, understand these same people will be around when you experience victory. And you might say, well, Cliff, I've never experienced victory. I always seem to experience defeat or embarrassment in public. Listen, I tell people a lot, I've heard people use the analogy that they've had a lot of public struggles, no, uh, private struggles, public victories. Well, with me, it's the opposite side of that or the, the flip side of that. I've had a lot of personal uh, um, accomplishments, but publicly I faced a lot of embarrassing moments. But you know what that did to me? That developed inside of me, not an anger, not a hatred. And then, you know, I went through all of those phases, but I had to deal with all of that. But it built a fortitude inside of me to understand that if I have to stand alone, I will yet stand alone. But I'm going to lose myself in every moment that is presented to me. Why? Because every moment that is presented to you is connected to your purpose. And if you are willing to lose that comfortable self that you that you are connected to, if you will lose that, then you will find yourself walking even greater in purpose. You know, I selected that song, as I said, to encourage you on tonight, just for you to remember that as long as there's breath in your body, and I say this all the time, as long as there's breath in your body, purpose yet remains. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on tonight. But purpose yet remains. Even if you feel like there is no purpose, and some of you might say, come on, go on to something else. No, because I want to drive this in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits. I want to drive it on the inside of you. I want to plant a seed inside of you for you to understand it. And then those who don't need the seed planted, I want to add the water to the seeds that have already been planted for you to understand the greatness that is inside of you. And we're not going to talk about greatness because we talked about greatness on our last episode. And if you haven't heard that episode or any other episode uh, of Transformation 2.0, Transformation Radio 2.0, or Transformation Radio, you can visit www dot cliftonpettyjohn.com forward slash transformation. Again, www.cliftonpettyjohn.com forward slash transformation. However, transfer, transformation is spelled T-R-A-N-S, the number four, Mation, M-A-T-I-O-N. Now, if you say, Cliff, that's just too much, and I realize it's a lot. I do realize it's a lot. It wouldn't be me if I wasn't being extra. However, you can just type in www.cliftonpettyjohn.com and it'll take you to my home page. You scroll down. As you scroll down, it'll give you a tab to push to go to Transformation Radio or Transformation Radio 2.0. And I encourage you to go listen to the past broadcasts that we've had. I've had some amazing guests so far, guys, and I have some amazing guests lined up. And I promise you, if you listen to what's being said, Listen, everybody that comes on might not be your cup of tea. Some of them that come on may be a cup of, your cup of coffee. You might not be a coffee drinker, but somebody else is a coffee drinker. You might drink sodas. You might drink water. Whatever it is, I have a diverse group of people that come on this show 
share freely, share freely the hiccups connected to their transformation, share their victories, share the things they had to fight back from, share personal struggles. They share all of those things that are connected to their transformation. Why? Because they realize they went through some of the things that they went to went went through because they were going through it so that they could have a case that is built. So when you get discouraged, you can listen to what they're saying and you can go on, and then in the midst of all of that, you're building a case, establishing a, cl- a case, establishing the fortitude, establishing your testimony, and now as, as God continues to bring you out, bring you through, begins to develop purpose inside of you, now you can go back and get somebody else because none of it matters if you're not willing to go back and get somebody else. If you're not willing, some people use the term pay it forward. I call it sowing, sowing what was sown unto you. If you're not willing to do that, then then what are we doing anything to? We were all created to create a better world. Many times we sit and we complain about everything that's going on in this world instead of understanding that maybe some of the things that are going on are going on because we haven't taken our rightful place and walk and aren't walking in the authority that was given unto us, walking into the walking in the dominion that was given unto us for us to create a world or create a culture or create an environment. Sometimes we're trying to focus too big and we need to narrow in on the small things first. And then as, as growth comes and we begin to progress, then we can take it and allow it to scale. I always tell everybody, never disrespect small beginnings. And I always use it as never disrespect little trying to get big. Sometimes we're so focused on being big and producing at a mass level or producing um, uh, or having mass production that we forget and miss the lessons in the little things that we are doing. So I always encourage everybody, start small. Build a small community. Build a small community of like-minded people that have the same vision that you have or that may not have the exact same vision you have, but you guys have a like mindset. You understand the purpose of why you were created. Create that small culture and then begin to allow it to spread like a wildfire, and then we will begin to see a better world. We will begin to see a world that understands that although you may not look like me, although you may not smell like me, although you might not dress like me, although you may not agree with me, yet I still can learn something from you, and I also can be respectful of your process and respectful of you as well. That kind of segues seg, seg, us into, listen, I don't know what's going on with me tonight. I'm having a, a speech problem all tonight. But we're going to segue into uh, my little speech I give every show, guys. And I know some of you probably are saying, I'm sick of you giving this same speech. Oh, well, don't listen. Psych, keep listening, guys. But don't just listen. I want you to also share the link, share the call-in number with other people so they can uh, join the conversation so they can also know exactly what's going on over here in Transformation Radio 2.0 or in Transformation Radio. Someone coined Transformation Radio the number one show in transformation, the number one show that deals with transformation. I didn't say it about myself. Somebody else said it. I know some of you might say, "Mm, that's easy for you to say. Because you're the host. Listen, I understand we've had some hiccups. I'm growing through this. You don't understand how far this puts me out of my comfort zone. But I believe in the message that we are spreading. And that message is you have purpose. You have substance. There is something greater inside of you. Listen to this, guys. Really begin to think about it. Now, you may not subscribe to the God that I subscribe to, and I respect that. I believe if it works for you, it works for you. I can I can respect that. I still can sit down at a table with you and have a conversation with you and not throw off, not be disrespectful, not tell you you're wrong. I can do all of those things. However, I know from a personal, personal life experience, the God that I subscribe to, he works for me. You know, he or it or they, however you want to identify God works for me. If it works for you, let it work for you. But it works for me, okay? And I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says very 
uh, clearly that he created us in his likeness in our image. As he created us in his likeness in his image, that means he resides inside of us. Therefore, if he resides inside of us, if we ever understand the power that is inside of us, the authority that is inside of us, who we actually are, yo, we could turn this world upside down. Do you hear me? We could begin to also cause that to become contagious and allow that to spread like a wildfire so that others begin to grab hold of it as well, all right? But here we go. Let's go through my little speech that some of you probably are tired of, all right? In everything that I do, I endeavor to create an environment in a culture where people with diverse backgrounds and belief systems feel safe and appreciated. The same can be said about this show. At some point, I'm going to open up the phone lines for those interested in calling in and communicating with us on tonight, all right? Now, here's why I want you to call in. I want you to call in with any questions that you have, but I also want you to answer tonight's question. And tonight's question is derived from tonight's song. Remember, tonight's intro song was Lose Yourself by Eminem. And tonight's question is, are you willing to lose yourself in order to fulfill your purpose? Now, you might say, Cliff, that that sounds crazy. It may. But are you willing to lose the self that you have created based upon your current circumstances and situations and your own personal limitations and grab hold of the self that says, you know what? They told me this glass ceiling was here. I can't accomplish anything beyond here. However, I'm going to bust through this this glass ceiling and understand that even the sky is not the limit. Do you hear what I'm saying? The sky is even not the limit. There are no limitations as it relates to the connection of your purpose. All right? Let's keep going here. So um, at some point, I'm going to open up the phone lines. For those who are interested in calling in and communicating with us on tonight, please understand that due to our limited time, I may cut you off at the one-minute mark. I may not. Yeah, I may. It kind of def- de- depends. depends on the flow of the show and where we are. If I cut you off, do not be offended. If I don't cut you off, don't think that, like, oh, yeah, he ain't cut me off, so the next time he won't cut me off. It may be the flow. Listen, I'm a prophetic person. Therefore, because I'm a, flow, a prophetic person, I am fluid in some areas as it relates to ministering to people. And that's what this is. This is ministry, guys. This is ministry. This is ministry outside of the four walls. That's what I do. My ministry and my function many times is not inside of the four walls of the church. Does not mean I will not minister inside of the four walls of, church, of the church, but I want the ones that's not coming to church. And some of you listen to me right now, you've been hurt in church, or you're just tired of church, or you don't want anything to do with church because you have a misunderstanding of church culture, or you had a bad experience in church culture. That's okay. I don't even care about all that. We can deal with that later. But right now, I want to get to the core of you that need to develop a personal relationship with a high, with the higher power, with the creator. You need to develop that personal relationship, okay? So, again, if I cut you off, don't be offended. Don't boycott my show. Don't tell people not to call in. Don't tell people not to watch. Don't post about me on Facebook. Don't post about Matter of fact, go ahead. Post about me on Facebook. Post the negativity on Facebook because for some reason, our in our society, when we see something negative, it kind of draws and attracts us to it. So if you got something negative to post about the show, freely post about it. Tag me in it. My name is Clifton Pettyjohn, C-L-I-F-T-O-N-P-E-T-T-Y-J-O-H-N. You can find me on all social media platforms as Clifton Pettyjohn. So if you're going to uh, post something negative about the show, be sure to tag me in it, okay? Use the hashtag Transformation Radio, hashtag Transformation Radio 2.0, hashtag Transformation, hashtag Purpose. Those are the hooks that we use for everything. So feel free to do that because for some reason people respond to that, okay? I love each and every one of you, and I appreciate you. I'm playing with you right now, but I do want you to know that I may cut you off at that one-minute mark. That's real, all right? But those who are calling in, I also want you to understand that if I have a guest on, you need to be respectful respectful of the guest. 
If I'm on here by myself, you need to respect, be respectful of me as well. We may not agree with everything. However, we have to learn to respectfully disagree, okay? And this is a platform where we welcome everyone's thoughts and everyone's opinions. We will not call, call anyone's thoughts and opinions dumb or stupid or wrong. Listen, everybody has their own journey and why they've gotten to the point that they've gotten to and where they're going to, all right? And we're going to be respectful of it. Like I said, you don't have to agree. I don't expect you to agree with everything I say. Matter of fact, if you start to agree with everything that I say, I don't want you around me. Because you become a yes man or a yes woman or a yes them or they. And I don't need that around me. Because sometimes I get off track and I need people around me that can say, yo, Cliff, come on now. Pull it together. What are you doing? Are you thinking? Are you even thinking in a bigger scale about the decisions that you're making right now? All right? So I'm going to open up the phone lines. I want you all to call in tonight, yo. I really want you guys to call in because I want to take time and answer your individual questions. I want to hear if you're willing to lose yourself and what steps you're going to take to losing yourself. I made sure that this was a year for me. And um, when I'm speaking of the year, I'm talking about 57, 79, and I'm talking about 2019, guys. Why? Because I determined that this was going to be a year that I jumped. It was going to be a year that I did things that were very uncomfortable to me. Why? Because that's not what I'm accustomed to do, accustomed to doing. There were some things that I've done in my life that became very comfortable to me, and when I get to a place of comfortability, I stay there. I remain there. The sad part about that is our purpose is never found in the comfortable moments or the comfortable spaces or comfortable spaces or, or places that we occupy. Our purpose is always <laughs> found somewhere where we are uncomfortable. I'll give you an example, okay? And then I'm going to open up the phone line. I am not a person that's comfortable speaking in front of a lot of people. Now, some people may hear me now. You're listening and you attended either one of my purpose uh, empowerment sessions or you uh, witnessed or you attended a service that I ministered at, and you're surprised because you're thinking, Yo, you seem very comfortable when you get up there. Well, first of all, that's the Holy Spirit anyway. And when I get up there, he takes over. That's not a game. That's literally that boldness, you know, that falls upon me is him walking through me. However, I used to not be able to relax enough to allow him to flow through me. And I'm telling you, when I first started preaching, I sucked, like, I talk about this on a whole YouTube video, and if you want to see that video, you can uh, type in my name on YouTube, Clifton Petty John. But I talk about it. I sucked, y'all. I really did. I sucked. It was terrible. Nobody had to tell me it was terrible. I knew it was terrible. I hated listening to myself and all of those things. I God began to establish that identity in me and that comfortability with the way that he called and created me to flow. See, many times when we start to do stuff um, that may be connected to our purpose, sometimes we only do those things or we, uh, I'm not going to say we only do those things, but sometimes the way that we do those things, we are mimicking somebody else that has become our mentor or our spiritual leader or somebody we admire and look up to. And it, it's not that we always do it from a negative space. Some of us, that's all we know. And, you know, one thing about the journey of purpose is that sometimes you have to forget everything that you know and realize, I know nothing. And when you get to that space of, I know nothing, and then you begin to search and research and study and meditate and get some alone time, begin to learn who you are and begin to learn who the creator is, then that identity is established in you. It wasn't until the identity began to be established in me that I was comfortable enough to stand up in front of people and say anything. I'm telling you, I would stutter. I would read straight from my paper. <laughs> Yo, my mouth would get dry. I remember one time, I really thought I did good that time, and one of the young people came up to me and said, he was my cousin, and he said, Yo, 
man, you really, you, you preach today, Cliff. And I was like, okay, I did my thing. He said, but, yo, was you purging or something? Because your lips were solid white. <laughs> because my mouth, I'm telling you, that's just the fear that gripped me. Like, it was so crazy. And it wasn't until I continued to do something, continue to do it, continue to do it, continue to do it, that I built that fortitude inside of me to understand, wow, this is what I was called and created to do. And many of you out there, you're like I was. If you do something, it seems uncomfortable, you don't seem great at it, you stop. And this is kind of tying in, uh, I celebrate Rosh Hashanah, you know, the, the head of the year. And this is my new year. I celebrate Rosh Hashanah, and it begins tomorrow evening when the sun goes down. And I'm about to minister a message to uh, those that are connected to the Transformation Center. Now, those who may not know what the Transformation Center is, you can visit www.thetransformationcenter.life, and center is spelled C-E-N-T-R-E, okay? Now, we are a faith-based community. Uh, and we welcome people from all walks of life. We don't care what your background is. We don't care what your present circumstance is. We don't care about any of those things. We gather together to learn and grow, okay? That's what we do. We are also a teaching and training center, a prophetic teaching and training center. That's who we are. I'm gathering them together um, virtually, and I invite you to join us. Uh, all of our videos are released on my YouTube page. As I said, Clifton Pettyjohn, you can look it up. You can scroll down, you'll see Bible studies, or you'll see uh, various inspiration vid inspirational videos we have. But on Tuesday at 7 p.m., I'm going to be ministering a message. And, and the reason why I'm talking about it is because we're going to talk a little bit about that right now as well. I'm not going to go into details with it, because I want you guys to come and join us and listen to the message as well, okay? But some of us, have become so accustomed, and, I, and I, I still deal with that sometimes, of when we start something and we're not good at it or we don't do it great or we can't seem to master it, we stop. But the reality is we have to begin to look at some of the things that we do now and realize we had a starting point with that as well. I played baseball. I love baseball, y'all. I played baseball um, – I probably about, I think I was 10 when I started, all the way up to 18, I believe it was, somewhere around there, yeah, when I graduated high school. When I first started baseball, I sucked. Now, and I know y'all probably said, you just told you sucked when you started preaching. I did, y'all. I'm telling you. It, thank God that, and I'm going to tell you how I know I sucked, because they didn't even record me. <laughs> And it's a lot of people that we recorded, but it was like, when I went up there, I was like, yo, don't record this dude, yo. Like, y'all don't understand how, how it was. My first time was pretty good. It was pretty good. But after that, I just would tense up. And, and, but with baseball, I sucked. I really did. And I quit. I quit. And I remember my mom having a conversation with me. And I was like, oh. Man, I can't quit. So I continued on and continued on and continued on. And that first year, guys, I sucked. I didn't get one hit that entire year. Like, I was a bench warmer. They didn't even want to put me in at all. But I wouldn't quit. And the crazy thing about it is baseball and softball runs in my family. A lot of my family plays it, and they were great at it. I had an uncle that was great at it. He was on – the Little League World Series team that uh, from Georgetown, Delaware, that won the World Series. He was a part of that team uh, years, 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 years ago. Um, but I wouldn't quit. So then the next year, I got a new coach. And this coach uh, played with my uncle. Actually, he played on that championship team with my uncle. And I remember – Honestly, I know uh, at the time we didn't know about the picking the team process. And I apologize if you hear background noise. That's my little cousins. They're out there having fun. They want to be a part of the show. But um, I remember nobody really wanted me on their team, okay? <laughs> nobody. You know how you play a pickup ball? Uh, I don't know if you guys played pickup ball when you were younger. But where we grew up at, we would play football, basketball. We even play baseball sometimes. 
but you didn't want to be that one that was the last one picked, like where everybody's like, no, you take him, no, you take him, no, I don't want him on my team. I know that's, that's how it had to be behind closed doors when they were picking teams. I know it. You can't tell me it wasn't. But this coach wanted me on his team, and he said it from day one. He told me, I want you to play, and I want you on my team. And I'm saying, thinking, first of all, did you see anything I did last year? Like, And that's how bad I was. The team I was on the year before, they didn't even pick me the next year. But he picked me up on this team, right? And he said something to me that, that completely changed the trajectory of my baseball career. And I got to say some of my life, too, it helped establish some confidence in me. He said, you're going to pitch. And I said, well, first of all, I was focused on the hitting part. Now, hear me out in this thing. I was so focused on the hitting part that I didn't even think pitching was a possibility, okay? He said, you're going to pitch. And he started teaching me. He just put me out there on the mound, and then he started working with me and started teaching me and started training me. Listen at me. And as he began to teach and train me, that year I went from, now listen to this, no matter of fact, if we reverse a little bit, that that first year I sucked, as I said, I didn't get a hit or nothing. Georgetown Little League, shout out to Georgetown Little League, sent me to camp in PA. Now, they could have sent anybody because whoever they sent was representing. No, I didn't go to camp that year. No, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. The next year I came, he, he started me pitching. I started being successful as a pitcher. Like, it was crazy. Georgetown Little League got together, sent me to camp. I went to camp. Now, keep in mind, the year before, I absolutely sucked. Now I became an all-star. I'm pitching in all-star games. You know, I'm winning all-star games to going to camp and PA, winning the camp director's award, which was awarded to, it was the MVP of the camp. Now, I went through that story because what if I had quit? What if I had quit the year that I sucked? Then I never would have had the enjoyment. I went on to play high school ball and everything. You know, I did not play college ball. I lost the love for it, guys. I was depressed. I had very low self-esteem. Depression was all over me. It was really crazy. I later coached. I did coach, but I stopped playing. I didn't want to do anything because I sunk into a state in my life where I just felt like I was worthless and of no value. Praise God for deliverance. I've been there. You know, if you want to have a conversation, you're welcome to talk to me about that. Now, the call-in number is 516-387-1756. Again, 516-387-1756. But I shared that story and about the preaching as well because those were a part of my purpose in life. Those were a part of my journey in life. And if I had quit on those, if I had listened to other people who were encouraging me to quit, did you hear what I said? Who were encouraging me to quit, who may have been doing it on the low or may have been thought they had their best interest in mind for me because they didn't want to see me embarrassed, sometimes you need to be embarrassed. Hold up, Cliff. No, no, no. I don't need I don't face enough of embarrassment. Sometimes you need to be embarrassment and you need to be embarrassment. You need to be embarrassed because it helps you. I'm telling you, it grows you, it establishes you, it builds your forehead as flint for you to be able to be who you were created to be. Don't get bitter in your embarrassment embarrassment. Get better. Get better so that the next time you won't face that same thing again. So I found myself, you know, in that journey, and I always wanted to quit. I was a quitter. I was a runner. I always wanted to run, and guess what, guys? That translated into ministry with me. And I'm going to be apologizing, and some of them may hear this early, but I'm going to be apologizing to those who identify uh, or call me their spiritual father or their mentor their spiritual leader or whatever. Um, because I realized that I have created an environment where it was comfortable and it was, um, how can I say it? It was comfortable 
and it was okay to quit as long as you create something new and start again. Well, anytime you quit, you lose the momentum that was established from what you were already doing. So some of us have to realize we haven't gained momentum in our lives because we haven't done it enough to gain that momentum. We have to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it, regardless of how we look, regardless of how it makes us feel, regardless of what people are whispering, regardless of what people are saying out loud. We have to keep at it. Like I talked about this on greatness. Are we willing to die for it? Are we willing to live for it when people think that we are crazy for what we believe? Are you willing for that? Are you willing to lose people, places, things, so that you can gain that which you need to gain for your purpose? Are you willing to do it? Are you willing to lose your current self if you are willing to help you? Now, I talked about my baseball coach, but even in ministry, I had a spiritual father, a mentor, and mother. They were mentors to me. They helped bring me up, even in the times when I didn't do that great. They were there to push and motivate me. I remember one time I went, and I'm a teacher, guys. I'm a teacher by nature. But a lot of times some of the environments I was in were for preachers. And I wanted to be a preacher too because I was like, people love preachers. People, Some people feel teachers are born. Now, I don't feel teachers are born. I love teaching. Teach me something. Don't scream and holler at me all the time. Now, I do like it sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But give me some stu- substance with it too. Um, when I went and I did this platform service and with two other young people, they were my friends, and they were preachers, and people were hype about them and everything. And my apostle came to me one time, and this still sticks with me today. He said, um, Cliff, here's what I have to say to you concerning ministry. He said, you're going to meet a lot of firecrackers. And he wasn't talking against the other preachers. He was just encouraging me to understand some of the things I was going to run run into in ministry. He said, Cliff, in life you're going to meet a lot of firecrackers. He said, people love firecrackers. He said, because firecrackers go up, they're pretty, they're great to look at, but guess what, Cliff? They fizz out and come down. He said, and then there are those who are light. And sometimes light can be silent, and sometimes some people try to cut light off. But one thing about light is it always will shine. And that blessed me that day to understand. I don't have to be like everybody else. And I want you to understand that. Keep going. Stop trying to reprogram what the creator has given to you to make it make sense to others or or uh, redo the blueprint. We're going to be doing the blueprint series. We haven't went through that yet, you know, at the Transformation Center. But we're going to be doing the blueprint series because one of the things I realize about in my business and in my, pers- my business, my personal life, and in ministry was that I kept recreating the blueprint. Therefore, the foundation that was established was just sitting there. And the foundation that was established wasn't going with the blueprint that I kept recreating. That wasn't the floor plan. So no wonder it couldn't stand or it couldn't prosper because I was trying to create something outside of the foundation that originally had been created. Build on the foundation of who you are. Build on the foundation of what the creator has told you you have been called, purpose, and designed to do. This must be a year, whether 5780 you're celebrating or 2020 that you're celebrating. It must be a year of continuous momentum, continuous momentum, continuous momentum, because in that continuous momentum, you're going to begin to see the changes in the transformation that you desire to see. This is not a time to rest. Now, reverse, reverse. There are two types of resting. There's a resting that we need to do in order to rest our body, to rest our mind, to rest our spirit, and even to rest our heart. We need to rest. We need to rest. That's proper rest. But I'm talking about the resting that's connected to quitting. 
I'm just chilling right now. Now, I was talking to my therapist the other day. Yes, I said therapist. I encourage everybody, especially if you are one that people dump on, if you are a leader of other people, you need a therapist. And I don't, and uh, listen to what I'm saying. You're not going to like this, some of you. Have your pastor, but have your therapist as well. Have your life coach, but have your therapist as well. Each serves a purpose in your life. Each serves a purpose in your life. Get you a therapist. It is okay, and it is actually healthy. And if it's one thing that I, the point that I drive as a life coach, as a transformation coach, is that we live a holistic life. That means wholeness in all core areas of our life. That means our mental as well. Okay, guys? Again, the call in number, 516. 516- 387-1756. Okay, call and talk to me. Come on, y'all. But I was talking to my therapist the other day, and we were talking about life and purpose, and he was asking me where I was with a lot of things. And I was telling him how I'm realizing how much I fight purpose. And I'm just throwing this out here at you guys. You know, just something for you to think about even in your own personal life. Do you fight purpose? Are you so stuck and bent on it being your way and making sense to you that you keep fighting the uh, the fluid side of purpose? I'm a person that likes to analyze everything. I like to know A through Z. However, that's not how the creator moves. I talked about this on the last show. Sometimes he starts at R takes us back to A, takes us back to R to get some of the things we may have missed while we were there, then takes us back to A, jumps us to Y, then we go to Z, then we go back to W. I think you get the point. That's how purpose works. It just works like that, okay? Um, And I was talking to him about my struggle with the fluid side of purpose. And we got talking about writing my second book. And... um. Those who don't know, I'm I'm in the midst of writing my second book. It's called um, What Now? What Now? It's kind of part of my life story, so, you know, it's going to be a good book. It talks about it's my coming out story. The day after I actually came out, I embraced who I was and had come out. It talks about that. And then we begin to take you on a journey of different What Now moments. And uh, I share some of the things that I did in What Now moments and some of the things that with as I grew up and had better skills in life that I wish I had did a little better, okay? But I don't regret it because why? Because everything that I did was connected to my purpose and it taught me what I needed to learn, okay? So I told him, I said, I can hop behind this mic and I can record shows for days. I said, I'm falling in love with it. I'm still uncomfortable with it. And the reason why I'm uncomfortable with it, guys, is because I like, crowds. I like talking to people. I like, even when I'm ministering, I will come up to you and just hold a conversation with you. And as I'm holding that conversation with you, many times the Lord will use me to minister prophetically to you, but I just like that face-to-face encounter. But somebody had told me, they were like, Cliff, you know, you got to think about, you know, uh, what you've been called and created to do. And uh, the message that you have needs to be heard by masses. You're not always going to be able to reach the masses by doing it face-to-face. So I begin to get behind this microphone. and Sometimes I get behind the, the uh, in front of the camera as well. Uh, and I'm still very uncomfortable with that. But I told him, I said, it just flows. I said, it can flow for days. And I said, I sit down and I go to write and nothing comes out. And he said, okay, okay, okay. He said, well, why are you writing the second book? And I want you to hear me. And it's crazy because a lot of times we laugh because the things that him and me talk about are the things I talk to people in my coaching sessions about. But sometimes I need to hear it from somebody else as well. So he said, why are you you so bent on writing this book right now? And I sat and I thought, and, you know, as I said, I'm a processor, and I started processing it, and I realized that this was me fighting the fluid side of my purpose. And ask me how. So glad you asked me. 
the why behind me writing the book, the why behind me writing my first book, From Stagnation to Transformation, if you have not read it, visit www.cliftonpettyjohn.com forward slash transformation. There you're going to find a free sample of the book. And then after you read the sample and it gets you hooked on the book, you're going to want to purchase the book. You can purchase that book through me, and I sign it for you, write you a nice little message in there, or you can purchase it on other platforms. It lists the platforms that it is available. Also, it gives you the option option of purchasing it through me, okay? When I wrote From Stagnation to Transformation, the purpose of writing the book was because it was inside of me and it needed to get out. I've been running from writing it for years, and I believe, and I still believe this today, that people who read the book, apply the principles of the book, see transformation in their lives. I believe it. I stand on it. Nobody can shake me from that, okay? I tell people all the time, if you get the book, you read the book, you apply the principles in the book, your life is not transformed in any manner. No problem. Write me. Prove to me you attempted to to apply those principles, and I will give you a money-back guarantee. I will give you a money back. I always give a money back guarantee. All right, so when I wrote the first book, it was because it was connected to my purpose. The second book was only being written because people were telling me that I should have had my second book out by now because my first book was written two years ago. So I felt as if I was forcing myself to try to do it. Now, here's the thing. I always encourage people to get over the thoughts and opinions of others. And for me, in many areas of my life, I am over the thoughts and opinions of others. But I thank God for this circumstance or this situation taking place in my life to show me that I still, I still, I still, I still am still hanging on to the thoughts and opinions of others. So I told him, I said, wow, okay, okay. So I started talking to him about how I'm, trying to embrace the fluid side of purpose even more so I encourage them that every time it seems like I'm fighting purpose to let me know that I'm fighting it, help me see that I'm fighting it so I can become more fluid in it. So what I've decided to do, all of those who were looking for the book, I'm taking a break from the book. I'm taking a break from writing the book. Now, that is not me resting and taking, you know, just say, oh, forget it. No, 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 no. I'm doing what I've been called and created to do right now. I'm creating content through radio and through social media, through television, through YouTube. I'm creating content that is needed right now through my voice. And that's hard for me sometimes, guys, because sometimes I don't like my voice. And sometimes I struggle with who's going to listen to what I have to say. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say. And people tell me how they love my voice. And I need to use my voice more. And people used to tell me that my voice soothed them, and helped them feel like everything was being going to be okay. I used to be a part of a crisis management team in the inner cities of Trenton, New Jersey. And one of the ladies used to tell me all the time, I only call you down to the office because you have a way of talking to calm us down. And I've taken that now and grasped it and put it in conversations because some of you listening right now, and I said a lot, and it seemed like I was all over the place, and I was. Um, you're listening, and you're hyped right now. You're stressed right now. And even as I'm talking to myself, I'm de-stressing, guys. This isn't a message, or, or uh, uh, the message that I give is not anything that's external from me. It always hits me first. And then sometimes while I'm ministering it or communicating or having a conversation with you. That's what we're doing tonight, having a simple conversation. It hits me right in my face and smacks me and says, that's your solution right there, Clifton, Maurice, Petty, John. That's your solution right there. So you're out there right now and you're just stressed and you feel like, you know, I always say there's no way, no hope, no how. I want you to understand, as I said, purpose yet remains. You just got to be willing to lose yourself. Lose yourself and lose everything and everyone connected to that self that's holding you back. Now, here's what I'm not saying. As soon as I get off here, you call everybody and tell them, I can't be connected to you no more. 
because you're connected to myself that's fighting my purpose. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Some of you may need to take some of those drastic measures because this is confirmation to you concerning some people that are in your life or some things that are in your life or some places you go that is in your that are in your life, okay? However, what I'm saying is transformation is internal. Let's deal with the things that are inside of us. Deal with the things that attract those type of people around us. Let's create a new atmosphere around us. And the more that we create a new atmosphere around us, it'll begin to draw people that are attracted to that atmosphere. Now, granted, that doesn't mean that we'll connect, every, uh, we'll um, draw or um, what I say to start to, yeah, draw people. Everybody that's drawn to it will be connected to our purpose or good for our purpose. No, nah, because you always got some people that's going to come anyway. Because some going to want to see, is he going to change? And some of you know, I don't understand that sometimes. I think it's social media. Social media has taught us that when somebody disagrees with you or somebody makes you mad or frustrated, delete them. It has made us rather dysfunctional, honestly, because we never seem to keep people around that disagree with us. Now, granted, there are some crazy people that are out there that I've had to block myself. There are stalkers out there, and some of you know there are stalkers out there because you're one of the stalkers yourself. I've been one. Come on, let's be real. We stalk people on social media. Some of you may take it to the next level and actually physically stalk people, but I've stalked people on social media. So we know there are some people that have to be blocked. But everybody that disagrees with you is not against you. Sometimes people are disagreeing with you for growth purposes. And that's what I was talking about earlier. We have to learn to be respectful of people's thoughts and opinions, even if they don't line up with ours. But I want you to lose yourself tonight. I want you to relax. Right now I want you to sit back. I want you to close your eyes, okay? Now, I know many of you are in circumstances and situations that you don't see yourself out of. Keep your eyes closed. Come on. As they used to say, every head bowed and every eye closed. <laughs> oh, man, I enjoy this, y'all. I really enjoy this. Um, but I want you to sit back, close your eyes, and I want you to think about where you are right now, okay? And some of you are in some financial situations. Some of you are in some emotional situations. Some of you are in some situationships that you just don't see yourself getting out of, all right? Now, you feel as if it's your lot. Am I correct? Thank you for answering. I can hear you guys answering. I want you to know it's all a part of your process. Open your eyes, okay? Now, we're going to close our eyes one more time. Okay? Close them for me one more time, okay? Now, here's what I want you to think about. I want you to get one thing in your mind that you thought was going to be the death of you. A circumstance, a situation that you didn't see yourself coming out of. It may have happened five years ago, 10 years ago, two years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago. It may have happened 10 minutes ago. 30 minutes ago, I don't care when it happened, you didn't see yourself out of that situation. You thought that there was no way, no hope, no how, just like you're thinking about this present circumstance that you are in right now. Think about it. I want you to think all about it. This is how we transform our lives, because we begin to transform our minds and reprogram our minds to remember how God brought us out before how the universe brought us out before. I, as I said, I respect who you subscribe to, okay? Think about those things. Some of you didn't know where your next meal was going to come from. You lost your job. Everybody walked out on you. You got a divorce. You felt as if your life was over. You gained weight. You felt like you were less attractive. You didn't see yourself coming beyond that. Everybody seemed to not understand you. Those that were for you seemed to all walk away at the same time. I want you to think about those moments in your life. 
okay? Now I want you to open up your eyes and look at where you are now. The fact that you can open your eyes where you are right now is proof that you're what? An overcomer, a conqueror. You got through it. God gave you strategies. He gave you techniques to get through it, and you got through it. The thing that you thought was going to take you out, you took out. Apply that same mindset. Apply those same principles. Apply that same understanding to what you're going through right now and completely lose yourself. Now, some of you, you might not even be able to listen to the last minute of the show because you started thinking about it. Tears started rolling. A praise started to be a spirit. And now you find yourself just running all around your house, and that's okay. Give God praise for what he did before so that you can understand and give him praise for what he's about to do. Praise him in advance for what he's about to do in the midst of your life. Lose yourself. Be willing to do something that you never done before because when you do something that you've never done before, you'll experience something you never experienced before. I'm great to get out of here, guys. My time is running out. But listen, thank you for joining me on tonight. Remember, we're here the third Monday of every month at 9 p.m. I want to see you. This is a special show. It is Saturday night, all right? I want you to enjoy the rest of your night. As I always say, create a great day, walk with purpose, and by all means, God, execute your vision. Peace. Can you identify any areas in your life where stagnation is manifesting? Now, I know some of you might say, no, I can't. But I want us to look at stagnation for what it really is. Some people have identified stagnation as something that's not growing or that's not producing. I don't believe that stagnation. To me, stagnation can also be that, yes, we're growing. Yes, we're producing. However, we're growing and producing in a manner that's disrespectful to the purpose and the greatness that resides inside of us. And listen, we all have areas where we can identify that we could be doing a lot better in. There's greater potential in those areas than we are experiencing. And guess what? I have a tool that will help you begin to experience transformation in those areas of stagnation in your life. And that tool is called From Stagnation to Transformation. That's right. That is my book, From Stagnation to Transformation. So I want you to head over to my website, www.cliftonpettyjohn.com. I want you to hit there. I want you to hit the Transformation tab. There you're going to find a free preview of my book. That's right. A free preview of my book. And I promise you, after you read the preview, you're going to want to invest in your personal transformation through purchasing the book. So again, hit over there, purchase the book. Let me know you purchased it. Here's what I always say, guys. If you purchase the book, you read the book, you apply the principles in your life, and yet you still are stagnant in the areas that you are applying them to, and you're not experiencing any transformation, and you can prove to me that you have applied these principles, I will give you a 100% refund. That's right, a 100% refund. Why? Because I believe in the application of the principles that are outlined in this book. So again, visit www. ClifftonPettyJohn.com and purchase your copy of From Stagnation to Transformation.